Hey everybody, how's it going? Dale here. Today a customer brought me a older HP Omen or an HP or an Omen by HP, whatever you want to call it, but it's a gaming laptop, 17.3 inch model. The exact model number is 17-AN110NR. Uh, he's got a couple of issues here that I'm going to help him out with. Um, he's never done anything to it since he bought it three or four years ago. He's got, uh, I think, a GTX 1050 Ti graphics. It's an 8750H Core i7, 8th generation. He has upgraded it to Windows 11 already. But he's basically out of, pretty much out of space on his C drive. This came configured weird, which HP, they, they all do weird stuff. Um, number one, it's only got 12 gigabytes of RAM. It's got an 8 and a 4 in it. And um, it's only got 128 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and he's only got about 16 gigabytes left of free space. It does have a one terabyte mechanical hard drive in there. Pretty much, he wasn't even sure what to do with that, but I enlightened him. So basically, today I'm going to upgrade the M.2 SSD from the 128 gig. I'm going to put a one terabyte uh, NVMe drive. As soon as I find it, I laid it here somewhere. And anyway, my phone was ringing. Uh, I was distracted. So anyway, oh, here it is, just a second. I am gonna do a clone. I'm gonna take out his 128 gig M.2 drive. And I'm gonna put in a brand new Sorry about that, a brand new one terabyte M.2 SSD. I'm gonna use the silicone power or an SP. So Gen 3, this what this PCI Express is, is Gen 3, not Gen 4, just because of its age. So he's gonna get a lot more extra space going to the one terabyte. But I'm gonna pull his drive out, I'm gonna clone his onto this over on my cloning station there. This shouldn't take too long. And we're gonna take care of the RAM. I'm gonna put in some G-Skill, a 32 gigabyte DDR4 kit, 3200 megahertz. Now I'm not sure if this is gonna see the 3200 because currently it's running at the 2666 or 2667. And so he's gonna have 32 gigabytes of memory, dual channel, as opposed to 12 gigabytes of memory. So that's basically it. I'm just gonna go ahead and shut this bad boy down. This is a really heavy laptop too. I'm not sure why it's so heavy, but he does take really good care of it. It's super clean. He's just, he does some video and, 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 and editing, some light duty stuff basically with this. He said he's not really even a gamer per se. Just gonna wait for it to come off or to go off. So anyway, there, it's all shut down. Yeah, I got my power cord unplugged, don't need that. But over on this side, you can see it's got a couple of USB and power cord uh, what do we got back here nothing in the back this thing is just heavy really heavy we got all the normal ports you find on a gaming laptop over here even got an SD card slot yay so I've already took it up taken took in, I've already took out <laughs> all the screws they're all the same length. They're little short, short guys. A number zero Phillips screwdriver works good for getting them out without chewing them up. And for basically these two in the back here, they're the ones that stay in. You just turn them until they click a couple of times. They don't actually come out of the chassis here. So just go around the perimeter, take out all the screws. And I'm going to get my trusty spudger tool here. My little triangle spudger tool and open it up. I don't, honestly, I'm not sure if I've done a 17 inch, 17.3 inch Omen. I've done a lot of the 15.6 inch ones, quite a few of them for upgrades. This one's just configured weird. Little tiny 128 gig SSD. Ain't room for much of anything on that. And typically, you just do a little jiggle here. This kind of goes here and comes down. Sometimes need a little persuasion here. Just a second. Get my persuade persuader tool here. Just want to be careful, guys. There, just like that. And you can see it lifts right off. So with that over there, 
this thing is heavy. I think it's all this back here. It's got quite the cooling system on it there, as you can see. If your GPU and CPU over here, very small, stubby little battery. He said the battery life isn't the greatest on it. But here's our, here's his one terabyte hard drive, and here's his M.2 drive. They got this port configured in such a way you have to mount the M.2 drive basically upside down with the controller and the NAND chips pointing down, but I can see some thermal pads down there, and I believe they tie that into the cooling system here, so that's good. But here's the two stick of RAMs, sticks of RAM. Um, just don't touch anything you don't have to. The battery connector is right here. It just, if you can see that, it just kind of slides back. So let me disconnect that real quick, just so we don't damage anything. But whenever I do disconnect a battery on a laptop, I very carefully open it up and I hit the power button a few times just to make sure there's no power floating around in there that we don't want. Now on these HP, when you disconnect batteries for any length of time, you turn it back on, it'll take a minute for it to pulse, and then it gives you a CMOS reset and all that just because of the battery. But usually I think you just hit enter and you're good to go. So we got rid of the battery. Let me get my new RAM over here real quick. Just like that. Our new, our new sticks of RAM. G-Skill. See what we got here. Yeah, this is only 2666. Not sure if the, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still battling my, battling my cold. Not sure if the BIOS or the motherboard is going to get us up to 3200, but that's okay. And of course, our little 4 gig stick. Totally dumb. So anyway, it'd be nice if it was 3200, but I don't think it's going to be. But you can put faster RAM in a slower slot, so to speak, and it'll work just fine. I've never had a problem. I'm sure some of you are going to tell me that's a dumb thing to do, but I didn't have any 2666. And pretty much all I keep around anymore is 3200 because it works just fine in most applications. So there's our nice, pretty, sexy RAM there. And let's get rid of this guy because I'm going to take it over there and clone it. Using a number zero Phillips, get the little M.2 screw out of there. Yeah. There's a. Geez. There's the thermal pads they got underneath there and some cooling and kind of auxiliary cooling, cooling over here for the M.2 it looks like. So there, I'm going to take this and this, I'm going to clone this and I do this. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. Alright guys, I'm back. Clone went pretty well, pretty quick. Out with the old and in with the new. So let's just pop it back. Oop. See, that's why you disconnect the battery. So let's plug. Oop. Got to go upside down. I'm not used to putting them in this way. Now, on laptops like this, in case you're wondering about the memory and the speed, um, these type of laptops don't have where you can go to the BIOS and do XMP or memory profiles or anything like that. It pretty much is what it is. A lot of it has to do, on, you know, unit like this, the chipset and just the limitations of the board and the CPU and whatnot. All right, so there's our new one terabyte M.2 SSD. We got our 32 gigs of DDR4. We'll see what speed it's going to be running at, and we're going to reconnect our battery. And once you do that, just be careful. Like I said before, don't touch anything. You don't have to. Very carefully, like I said, when I turn this back on for the first time, I'm probably going to get like a CMOS reset, but you should be fine. Uh, there's, real, there's nothing to do in the BIOS. Just turn it on and wait for it to boot up. So let's cover it back up while the getting's good. Now those drives, those SP or silicone power drives that I use often, not all the time, but often, um, they do have free cloning software it's from NTI. It's called NTI Echo. You can use, you know, dongles, you know, something like this, for example. 
you can get you can put this will support an m.2 nvme ssd plugs in the usb a or usb c port on your laptop you can clone with the original drive still on the computer download that software it is free through sp you have to go through a few hoops to get it so to speak you have to give them your email address they send you a verification and they email you an activation code for it i'm going to tighten these two screws up in the back here just so they're done all right i'm not going to put all the screws back in it yet just in case i always wait till i'm done done before i completely button them back up in case i have to go back in there it's a little quicker all right so that should be good heavy bugger reminds me of a an alienware laptop omen by hp hmm it's an hp so let's plug in our power cord while we got it here um so yeah let's turn it on and see what happens it's okay that was just everything snapping back together for us <laughs> So let's hit the power button. Like I said, it's probably going to do some weird stuff here when I first turn it on. Like it's doing right now. It's going to read that new memory, hopefully. And just kind of do all of its BIOS learning there. All the crumbs that come out of the keyboard when I put these things upside down. That's always exciting. Shut back off again. Come back on again. Got to be patient. Wait for a post, hopefully. Yeah, there we got our CMOS reset. Enter to reboot the system. Shouldn't affect the time or anything or the date, but we can check that once we're in Windows. Now, typically after a clone like the way when I take it out of the computer we're going to get some disk checking stuff going on here with Windows usually which is a good thing otherwise it'll just blue screen you do oh there it goes it says to skip disk check checking press any key within five seconds we're not going to do that we're going to let it whip through these different partitions here real quick this is actually a good sign done millions of these if you're doing it for the first time you might see that and think oh no what's what's wrong just let it do its thing now it's going to do a quick check disk here stage one two and three this usually doesn't take too long especially with the m.2 ssd drive again this is totally normal guys i just want to get into windows and see where we're at with our memory more than anything but yeah, if you get that NTI Echo software, you can install it. I think they said it's good for like two, two clones with the activation key they send you. I got a video that I just put up, just put up where I used that software for the first time, where I cloned it, you know, with the original drive in the computer using the m.2 dongle there so to speak and it, it actually worked really well didn't have any data on that particular computer but it went really fast there we got we got our login screen that's good do our magic word here boom look at that all right let's go into file explorer real quick fans are already kicking on and there's our you see that there's our one terabyte you can see it's not hardly full at all and there's that origi original original one terabyte mechanical hard drive that's in there. And let's open up Task Manager real quick here. That's probably kind of hard for you guys to see. Yeah, let's see where we're at with that memory. Yeah, it's only at 2667, but it is 32 gigabytes. It's going to run just fine, but it's just not utilizing the full speed of that that RAM that's typical on 7th 8th gen now a lot of these 7th and 8th gen HPs that I've done just the lower end models especially I get a lot of them in here that have M.2 SATA SSDs and they don't even support an NVMe drive so kind of hit and miss on those I never know which one is going to be which but in this case we started out with a PCI Express M.2 so there 
we got a good clone. I'm going to do some updates and some other stuff. Uh, get them tuned up and working good. Hope the video was helpful, guys. Check out my channel for more videos just like this. Subscribe. Hit the little bell so you can get notified of new stuff. You guys all have a great day.